Afternoon, guys. In case he just has a hold, just how proud were you of the overall special teams performance on Saturday to get a punt return, go back, a couple blocks? Just what did that mean to you to see the, all that come together for you? Just exciting because I think our players have really bought into what we're trying to sell. Um, you know, we have been selling, and just to finally see those guys get the opportunities to make plays and see that all the hard work and all the drills and you know, you, you just do drills over and over and it becomes monotonous at times, but to see those drills pay off. We even pulled up drill tape yesterday of Noah Pierre blocking a punt in practice on a drill, and it was the exact same situation that happened on Saturday. And so just to reiterate to those guys, look, we practice these things for a reason and uh, every little detail counts. So just, you know, really excited for those group of guys because they work their tails off. Our players, man, they deserve it. And, uh, you know, they're just a great group of, of young men that, that buy in, that was the best part about it. Yeah, one of the more interesting uh, camp things was watching the punt return decision. You got Reese Taylor has been there and done it, done it okay, and you bring in DJ Matthews. Now he's, 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 he's done something. Where are you with that? Will, will we see DJ on Saturday? You'll see both. I'm going to use both, and, and that's, uh, it, you know, it is a challenge because both those guys want to have the ball in their hands. The beautiful, the beautiful thing about it is, you know, if, like I said, if Reese goes a long time on defense in a series or vice versa, if DJ goes a long time in a series and having, you know, just giving those guys a breather if they need it. I thought Reese played a bunch early, and obviously I love Reese on, on our kickoff team. Reese is one of our best players on kickoff. So, you know, to try and, and he's starting corner and just to try to take a little bit off of him, it's nice to be able to put DJ back there um, and have multiple weapons, you know. So I would expect to continue to see both guys. I mean, obviously DJ's, Phenomenal with the ball in his hands. He's got terrific ball skills. I mean, just the you know the ability to track down that ball over the shoulder and then turn around. And we had a wall called set up. Um, I think everybody could pretty much guess that. But you know, just to get back to the wall after running the opposite direction was just was terrific by him. But that's that's the expectation we've come to know because I've seen it in practice. So, um, but having both of those guys is a weapon for us, and, and we're going to use utilize that to the best of our ability without a doubt. I guess you talked about it a little bit, but going back, just how important in your mind, you, you don't get as many snaps in the game on special teams. It's, it's maybe not, there's not quite as much quantity as you get on offense or on defense typically. Just how important is it in, in some respects for just guys to taste a little bit of that success to your point about how much you work on it in practice and maybe not having as much opportunity for return on that investment in games. Just how important, especially early in the season, is it maybe for guys in those units to just sort of say, well, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when it matters. It's critical um, because you preach it. And so as a coach, you, set, you tell them over and over and over, hey, it only takes one, you know. And uh, getting down early versus Iowa, I kept challenging our, our uh, kickoff return unit. I said, look, guys, I said, if he kicks one that we got returnable, you know, he doesn't kick one out of the back of the end zone five yards deep, we're taking it. And uh, all it takes is one play because I do believe that one play can spark. It really can. I mean, you could see just the impact. And I know offense was rolling, and Micah and Ryder did an unbelievable job on the strip sack force fumble on the fifth play of the game. But when that punt was blocked now, that stadium was loud. And just the impact and how fast it can change a game and uh, just the environment alone, especially when you're at home. Um, you know, special teams plays make such a significance uh, and just the spin and the, and the movement of the game and, and those type of things. So, um, you know, it's critical for those guys to see that. And, and we talk about that all the time. And just to have them executed at a high level uh, is obviously going to be critical for us moving forward as well. You know, you got to set the tone from the opening play. And the first play of every single game is the special teams. And you got to set the tone, whether it's on kickoff or kickoff return. We expect to do that. You see a lot of times with special teams, it's, it's, it's that one big play in a game that makes a huge difference. But you guys just piled it on, you know, Saturday night. You just, you know, every, it seemed like every special team's occurrence was something special. And uh, how much does uh, one big play lead to others? I, th I think a lot, right? And AJ's block, to his credit, wasn't even a block. I was trying to set up a return. But we tell him, if you're free, go take your shot, right? And so Davion did a, made an unbelievable play on that play and actually it doesn't get the credit. He dives in and pulls a shield down, so AJ's free. Same thing happened on Noah's block. But it becomes contagious. Somebody sees somebody do I want to do it, right? And so, but that's, that's what you want, and guys are excited. Um, AJ scored the touchdown on the long pass from, from Tut. He's on the PAT field goal team. 
I have his backup on the hammer team mat or a kickoff mat because I'm like, he just ran 80 something, right? Long touchdown. He's got to be tired. Comes over and goes, I want to run down on kickoff. And so, all right, man, I'll let you go, you know? So it's just, it becomes contagious because they want to make those plays and they understand the impact that it has on the game, I, I believe. And um, I think our players have just done a terrific job of buying in. Yeah, uh, James Evans looked like he punted the ball a little bit better week two in his opportunities. And well, where's his comfort level now and how critical is it going to be you know, for this week, considering it could be a field position game? It's going to be vital. And Cincinnati brings a ton of pressure. I've just been all morning watching them. And so I'm expecting them to bring a lot of pressure. Our protection is going to have to be on point. I think our protection has been as solid as it's been the last couple of years. Um, you know, I think our guys do a great job and with, with that. So um, he, he's definitely more comfortable as it goes on. I, you know, I'd be lying if, uh, and he would be lying too, if he said that, hey, the first time at Iowa, you get the crowd and everybody, of course. You know, you're, it's not so much he was nervous. It was more of like, you know, I can't believe I'm in this situation, just talking him through it. Um, we're trying to, you know, I, th I believe the, the scheme that we have in um, is what he does best, um, you know, between some of the, the pockets and the roles that we'll be utilizing uh, throughout the game. Um, but it's just to get him in a rhythm at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, his confidence is, is, is good. It's, it's growing every single day. Uh, he did feel, obviously, and I think he felt and looked more comfortable um, on Saturday. Uh, you know, for sure, and I think he's he's really growing to trust the the guys blocking for him. I think at the end of the day is the biggest thing. So um, he'll tell you he's had just a couple minor things. His drops weren't great. Um, you know, at times we do kick a lot of cross field punts because I want to keep teams honest. Um, you know, the across from us, I don't want them to know if we're on the right hash, we're always going to punt right, and if we're on the left hash, we're always going to punt left. So I like to change it up and try to keep those returners honest as possible, which I thought he did a good job on Saturday of kicking cross field um, to where they couldn't field some of those footballs, let those things roll and gain some hidden yards there. So, um, you know, just continue to utilize that skill set for him. He just got to work on his drops, but his steps are clean. His timing is great, you know. Um, and so the guys protecting for him have done a phenomenal job and just helping him relax. Hey, Coach, uh, how have you seen the success in this program impact your uh, recruitings of players in Florida, like James Mons, Bill Dunham, guys like that, moving forward? It, it's, it's been awesome. It's a relationship-based deal, too, where, you know, a lot of the Florida kids know Florida kids at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, growing up down there, I could tell you I knew guys that went all over the country. And so Florida kids know Florida kids. And so when you get a couple in the boat, those, without even saying anything, those dudes will automatically go recruit other guys. Hey, coach, they'll send you dudes. Coach, we, you got to see, I just played against this kid. He's unbelievable. I talked to him after the game. He loves Indiana. Like, and you're like, who is this kid? You don't even, so, um, you know, they do a great job of just communicating down there. But the success that we've had, and then obviously Coach Allen having ties to Florida has been critical for us as well because you know a lot of the high school coaches, you know a lot of the area coaches. Um, and I'll be honest with you, going down there, the high school coaches, they want their players when they're sent away to know that they're going to be treated right and taken care of. And you don't need to look any further than Tom Allen. And he, that's what he is about. And he sits in those living rooms. I've been in living rooms with him. I've been in homes. I've been in schools. And he sits there and tells the coaches and parents, like, you know, first he's going to be taken care of as a man, you know, developed as a man and a football player. And that gives a lot of those high school coaches, you know, just comfortability that we can send them across the country or, you know, to Indiana 16, 12 hours away and he's going to be taken care of and developed. And, and uh, I mean, that's a huge deal for sure. You mentioned uh, Davion, Irvin Poindexter before. I guess obviously he's getting a little bit more action in his, his you know, immediate position. What's been his value for you in special teams? Where all of you used him basically, and, and what has he done just to get himself a, a, a shot there? I guess how would he help on your end? You know, last year he was on our punt return team. He started, I believe, every game on our punt return team. Um, last year took a, a bunch of vital reps there. Um, we always use him on kickoff return as well. We can slide him in different positions. Um, just some blocking techniques. He's great with that. Haven't really used him on any cover units uh, quite yet. You know, those are mostly I like to put a lot of defensive guys on those just because of the open field tackling. Um, but he does a great job with his feet. He's very strong with his hands. Um, you know, so just understand the leverage on blocks and things like that. So for punt return and, and uh, kickoff return, he'll be, he'll be utilized there. Um, he's a guy that also has a walk on, just has that chip on his shoulder, you know, and busts his butt every single day. He's phenomenal in drills. And like I said, I evaluate drills so much to make sure we're putting the right guys on the field to, to block and get those things done. And he just, he, he kicks it, you know, everybody's butt in those drills. So he's earned a spot for sure. Thanks, guys.